It's the best time of the year. It is football season, and we've had a great time previewing all the teams. This team, Bishop Kenny High School, is taken care of by the Jacksonville Orthopedic Institute. They always have trainers on site taking top care of their football players. I got a chance to speak with Bishop Kenny's head coach, Coach Bobby. Got some insight into his season. Not only is there, a, you know, a new playoff structure for all of Florida football, but Bishop Kinney's team specifically is now in a new class and they will now be battling teams like Trinity Christian who are going for their fifth consecutive state title. Take a look. By the Jacksonville Orthopedic Institute. I'm t here today with Bishop Kinney's head coach, Coach Bobby. Thanks so much for having us. Thank you for being here. So I know you've been head coach of Bishop Kinney for the past two years. Tell me about how last season went, what your record was, and then your hopes going into this season. Well, last season was a little different, I think, for everybody in Duval County because we were dodging hurricanes uh, most, yes. most of the, the late summer, early fall. And so we ended up only playing nine games. Uh, our record during the regular season was six and three. Okay. Uh, we finished district runner-up to Ponte Vedra, and uh, we lost in the first round of the playoffs to Rebalt. Uh, it was a really rewarding year for me as a head coach being my first year here as in that role. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a great group of seniors, uh, guys that had been here for four years, many of them had played a bunch, and so we had a, a, a fairly good amount of returning starters coming back, and that always builds a great foundation for leadership. And when you've got the kids in place that understand what's expected, because I had been here two years prior to being a head coach as a, as a coordinator, and they kind of knew me a little bit and understood what was expected, and, mm -hmm. and I think it started for us in January uh, of, of last year in the weight room. And they really worked hard all year, and we started off uh, against a great Bartram Trail team, mm -hmm. and, and we lost that game, but I think it showed us we fell behind pretty early, uh, very quickly, and uh, we fought back and, and made it a competitive game in the second half, and I kind of figured from that point on, at least we, if nothing else, we've got fight, and our kids really demonstrated that throughout the course of the entire year, so it was a rewarding year for me uh, and the kids, and, and a lot of those guys now have moved on and are going to college, and they'll be greatly missed, but we've got a great group coming back. So who all do you have returning? Because I know you mentioned you had a lot of great seniors who now are at the collegiate level. Who are some of your big returners and recruits this year? Well, I'll start on the offensive side of the ball. We return, I believe it's nine of 11 starters on offense. That's great. Uh, we return both of our quarterbacks, uh, Salem Farman and Tucker Talbot, who both uh, played pretty extensively last year. Mm -hmm. Up front on the offensive line, uh, we bring back uh, Jack Rainey, uh, Evan Lodeholtz, uh, Nico Politano, Zach Costner at tight end, mm -hmm. and then uh, on the edges at wide receiver, we bring back Aaron Fudge, Cade Sams, and Kaneen Maxwell. Got to find a running back. Uh, that's okay. one of the guys we lost that, that was a senior. Uh, mm -hmm. Curtis Gavin has departed, and so we got to find somebody to fill in his shoes. But I feel like we've got some great candidates uh, from which to choose, and, sure. and we'll let them fight it out over the summer leading into, into fall camp. But we've got uh, several guys on that side of the ball that we feel like can play collegiately. And mm -hmm. we don't focus a lot on that. We mm -hmm. focus more on the process and take care sure. of what you need to do on One a game at a basis. Time. And for us, we tell our kids that if you'll do those things, the collegiate stuff will take care of itself when the time comes. But Aaron Fudge is certainly a guy that, it, that has gotten a lot of attention here over the last year uh, as one of our returning wide receivers, as have some of our offensive linemen from some FCS and Division II schools. So uh, we'll let that kind of shake itself out as time goes on. On the defensive mm -hmm. side, uh, we've got some work to do. We only bring back uh, seven, excuse me, we only bring back four of 11 starters. Okay. Uh, but we've got those four, really played a lot last year. Uh, up front, on the defensive line, uh, Ridge Avensay and Aiden Sweat uh, mm -hmm. are our defensive ends. Michael Munder played, uh, played some linebacker in the middle force last year, even though he was hurt part of the year last year. And then uh, inside at tackle, we bring back Josiah McCallum and Jack Rainey. So the guys we've cup, got coming back have played a bunch of football but we definitely have some holes to fill in the secondary as we lost all five of our starters in the secondary. So sure. that's where our work has to be done. And then last but certainly not least, special teams. Um, we've got what we feel like is one of the best place kickers in the state. His name is Matthew Brust. He's mm -hmm. also being recruited pretty heavily by some, some fairly big colleges. Uh, super big, big time leg, uh, very, very accurate. And what you find unusual in high school is he's converted on field goals when they matter the most. He, in the last two years, has won two games for us in, in the waning minutes and even seconds of games where we've had to have him make a kick. 
in order to, to secure the victory. That's impressive. And he's done that. Yeah, it's so we feel like uh, if we can get the ball in the end zone or even pretty close to it, if not, we've got a guy that sure. from 50 yards or in, we feel like is pretty pretty dead on. Absolutely, and I think I completely agree with you. That's all you can really ask for at the end of the day is overall improvement as well. And I know you two are partnered with the Jacksonville Orthopedic Institute. Tell me a little bit about that relationship. It's a great relationship and, and we are so fortunate and blessed here at Bishop Kenny to, to have uh, that organization be a big part of what we do. We, we actually look at them as an extension of our coaching staff. Uh, our trainer that comes over to our school every day, his name is Greg Heater. He does a tremendous job with our young men, and it's something that gives you as a coach a sense of comfort and peace to know that if something does happen at practice with one of our young men, mm -hmm. um, we've got a, a trainer out there who has years of experience in dealing with football type injuries and understands the process. And so I know not everybody has that, and sometimes even even us here at Kenny, we, we take it for granted. Mm -hmm. But when you, when you ask me the question, it just is such a, a great reminder for us that, hey, every day we go out there, we've got somebody who's got our kids best interest at heart and is making sure that we're doing things the right way as coaches. Because at times we get carried away with the practice sure. and we may not always notice if something's happening with a kid and we've got a guy out there who's doing nothing but watching that. So it's been an incredible uh, benefit for us and, and they do a great job.